The long-awaited self-tan review is finally here. This video has literally been over a year in the making, um, partially because I did give up on filming it a couple of times. Just because if I was going to do a self-tan review, it needed to be really good. And I, you know, I just kind of gave up a couple times, but here we are having tested the tans and I am ready for the video because I have some swatches on my leg. If you guys are new here, my name is Catherine. We do a lot of activewear reviews, but one thing I do really love is a nice self tan. Me and the sun, we're not friends. After getting sunburned in Florida last fall, end of summerish, after literally only being outside for like an hour, I decided that sitting out in the sun, even when I'm wearing sunscreen, is just not for me anymore. I don't wanna be out in the sun. So anytime I go to another pool or beach, you will find me under an umbrella because the sun, it's just, it's just too much for me. I know, I know vitamin D, all that, but you know what? I get enough vitamin D, like just walking around for short periods of time, but being exposed with my skin under the sun, tanning, it's a no. But self tanning is something I can get behind. I truly feel like my confidence just steps up a notch when I am a little bit tanner, especially since I'm constantly filming myself. Oftentimes I look very washed out without a little bit of a darker color. This is by no means to say that anyone needs to self tan, but personally I just feel a little bit better when I do. So this video is going to be kind of a comprehensive, a little self tanner 101, my self tanning routine. And then I'm reviewing and comparing five very popular self tans and then sharing which one is my favorite. I also wanted to make this as organized and controlled as possible. So for every tan, I waited until my previous tan was 100% gone. That's part of the reason why this video took so long because the tan is not 100% gone within one week. So oftentimes I had to wait two to three weeks until I had no tan remaining. For every tan, I used my loofah to exfoliate before applying. I did my full same self tanning routine, use the same mitt, we'll go over that in a second. And for each tan, I did a check-in at 24 hours after I applied the tan after three days of wear and then after six days of wear so we can kind of see how the tan lasts throughout the week. We'll also be talking about color tone, transfer, scent, developing time, streakiness, all that good stuff. So if you're not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's talk about what self-tanner is. So first of all, just regular tanning from the sun. That happens when the UV rays penetrate the skin, then they simulate melanocytes in the epidermis to produce more melanin, therefore you get more pigmented. Some people tend to freckle a bit, some people don't tan very well and end up burning a little more, but any type of UV ray that is penetrating the skin is causing damage to the skin. So there's really no safe way to tan naturally with UV light. Obviously a little bit of sun exposure is different than getting constantly sunburned, but that's how regular tanning works. But a topical self tanner does not work the same way. So if you look on the ingredient list of any self tanner, the first ingredient will probably be water Water, but the second ingredient will probably be dihydroxyacetone or DHA. So DHA is the active ingredient in self tanners. And how that works is the DHA reacts with the outermost layer of the epidermis. It's called the stratum corneum. And I did do some research on this as well. So I'll include some scientific articles below. I am a third year dental student and I have done research in the past. So I do have experience reading and interpreting scientific articles. And the reaction of the DHA is limited to the outer layer of the skin. So basically what's happening is it's reacting with the outer layer of the skin and creating a browning effect. And from what I was able to find in the literature, it seems like the consensus is that this is limited to the outer layer of the skin and your skin is a barrier, so it's not getting absorbed into the body. So essentially the outer layer of the skin is just kind of stained. So that's why your tan will last approximately three to 10 days just honestly depending on your cell turnover. So if you're exfoliating a bit more or your skin tends to turn over a little bit faster, which you probably won't even be aware of, your tan will fade a little bit faster than others. This is also why if you have a self tanner that doesn't even have any guide color, you still might get some orangey self tan on your white clothing because some of your skin cells might just be rubbing off onto the clothing and those are stained. So that's what you're seeing on your clothing. It's not necessarily always the self tan guide color. Color. And this is another reason why your skin will always smell just like a little bit, even after you rinse the tan off completely because the self tan smell that kind of smells like, I don't know, something's like a little bit cooked. That's not coming from the self tan. It's actually coming from the reaction with your skin. So the smell is going to remain on your skin, 
even after you wash off the tan. And something else that should be mentioned is that self tanners actually can make your skin more susceptible to the damage from UV rays. So if you do self tan, make sure you're really putting on your SPF and not just going out and sitting in the sun. It doesn't act like a base tan as like a natural tan. You are actually more susceptible to UV free radical damage once you have your self tanner on. So I know we all like to self tan before a beach vacation, but really make sure to keep applying that SPF. So one of the reasons why your self tan doesn't last as long as a naturally produced tan is because the self tan is targeting the very outer layer of the skin and the melanocytes are on the very lowest layer of your epidermis. So they're much deeper and the color is going to last longer, creating actual pigment deeper in the skin. All right, hope that little segment was informative and then we learned a little bit on how self-tan works. Knowledge is very important. And now let's move into my self-tanning routine. All right, so first of all, always make sure you are self-tanning around like, you know, 16 to 24 hours before the event where you actually want to be tanned because even though there are self-tanners that say that they're like a one to three hour like self-tanning time, the reaction on your skin continues to develop for 24 to even 48 hours. So specifically like with this tanologist tan, I use it, wash it off after two hours, your skin looks like nothing ever happened. And then you wake up the next morning and suddenly you're tan. So even after you rinse it off, you're still getting the reaction. So don't self tan and then expect in two hours in your event to actually be tan. So I try not to shave the shower right before I'm self tanning out either the day after I tan or a couple days before, but self tanner has to be applied to clean skin. So we always start off with a little shower. I use my loofah for every shower, even though it makes my self tan fade a little faster because I'm exfoliating. I just don't feel like I'm clean without a nice little loofah scrub. So I use my loofah and specifically when I'm showering right before a self tan, I use the Aveeno Skin Relief Body Wash or really any body wash that is just like a little more hydrating because my skin tends to be pretty dry. And since I can't put lotion on my body as I'm self tanning, I like to use a hydrating body wash. So I get out of the shower, I completely dry off and then I apply a little bit of lotion just to the dry parts. I apply this to my ankles, my knees and even the backs of my knees, my elbows, even my armpits a little bit and like the skin kind of around my armpits right here tends to collect a lot of tanner as well and my hands. Then I apply an even layer of my self tanner. I tend to start at my legs and then I get my legs my torso here, my arms, and then if Ian is here, he will do my back. Or I do have a tip on how to self tan your back in a second. But anyways, this is my favorite self tanning mitt. I have the expensive ones from Saint Tropez, which the Saint Tropez self tanning mitts. When I had it, it was like the worst self tanning mitt ever. It literally fell apart after like three uses. But this one's amazing. I love how it has the thumb. So it just like is easier to like, I don't know, self tan. You don't have to go all like, you know, mitten hand. It has this like slightly fuzzy little like, I don't know, microfiber almost. Here's a close up. It does absorb a bit of the tan, but it's lined with a like plastic lining. So you'll never have it seep through your hand and get your hand directly with self tan or else it will literally never come off. So always use a mitt or a glove. And then for self tanning the hands, I'll demonstrate. I do like a little, little tiny squirt of tanner onto the mitt. And then I just kind of dab it with the brush and then just kind of like lightly buff it into my hands. And then I might even do like my ears or kind of buff it into like my jawline a little bit. Another tip for self tanning your hands and not looking like disgusting is if you're wearing like an eight hour self tan and you're not going to bed immediately, wash off your hands completely after like two hours and they tend to just look a little bit better. Or if I'm using an express mousse and I'm keeping it on for like one to three hours, I'll wash my hands after one hour. As for how I self tan my back when no one is around, first of all, I get as much as I can with my back, just kind of reaching around, reaching like that. And then usually I only have like a little patch left in the center of my back. And then I created this idea in college, but I take my hairbrush and we put the hairbrush inside the tanning mitt. I get the remaining portion of my back with the hairbrush and mitt combo and it works really well. All right, after all of the self tan is applied, I kind of just like, you know, do this for a while, make sure I'm all separated. I wait for it to dry, usually just like five to 10 minutes. And then I put on my tanning clothes. I honestly should just try these on to show you guys how ridiculous I look. But first of all, look how much tan rubbed off onto this shirt last night. We will reveal which tan this is. Spoiler alert, don't love it. And then I kid you not, this is what I look like 
while I'm waiting for the tan to develop. I always like to have like a lightweight long sleeve and I tuck it in so I don't get the like elastic indentation marks like into my tan. I don't know if that's something that it does, but this just like makes me feel less paranoid. And then every time I bend my elbow, I always make sure to like keep a little bit of fabric between there so it's not like skin on skin so I don't like start sweating and rubbing the tan off. But yeah, these are like airy sweatpants. This is like an old sorority shirt and I slept in this last night. Then you let your tan develop. Usually I wait overnight even though I do despise sleeping in self tan. Then I do a quick rinse in the morning, just get all that guide color off. I use the same body wash and then I just apply a regular lotion to my entire body and that is it for the routine. All right, now let's get into the actual self tanner review. So I'm starting off with what might be my most worn self tan, the Tanologist Dark Mousse. So I 100% recommend the mousse over the self tanning water. They have a self tanning water that comes in like a little spray, but it gets pretty messy. I prefer the mousse. And one thing I love about the mousse is that it is a clear spray. So it does not have a guide color. It literally looks like this, applies completely clear. So I don't necessarily recommend the Tanologist for like a first tan because you really do have to be careful to not miss any spots. But you can actually see a little bit of gleam in your skin from the wetness of the tan. So that's kind of how I guide myself on where the tan is. I'm not necessarily going to be rating things on a scale of like one to five, one to 10, because I feel like those kind of ratings are pretty arbitrary in this sense. So I'm just gonna kind of give you a descriptive thoughts. Honestly, unless you are like super, super pale, which I'm pretty pale, I honestly always recommend going for a dark, if not the darkest self tan shade, because to be honest, none of them look super dark. Like I'm wearing an ultra dark tan today. I wouldn't even say I still look pretty pale. And that's not even the tan's fault. It's just because I am so pale that even the darkest color tan isn't going to make me like super, super tan. So usually light color or even medium color tans, you end up applying them and it's like a lot of work for so little color payoff, they are better off just like not tanning at all. I don't know, that's my personal opinion. If you are someone who uses a light or medium tan, let me know in the comments why you do that because maybe you have reasons that I just haven't thought of. So Tanologist comes in light, medium, and dark. They also recently came out with an ultra dark, but it has a guide color. One of the reasons I like the Tanologist is because it applies clear. You can find Tanologist at Target, Ulta, Amazon, and it's a pretty affordable tan. I've seen it anywhere from like $15.99 to like $20. And I honestly don't know how many applications I get out of this, but like at least a solid five applications full body. The time frame for Tanologist, this is an express tan, so you can leave it on anywhere from one to four hours. I try to leave it on for at least three hours, if not overnight. In terms of the smell, it just kind of has like a fresh, somewhat floral scent, but the scent is not overwhelming at all. You are gonna get some of that self tan scent, as I talked about before, because that's the active ingredient in self tanner. That's, you're literally always going to have some form of self tan scent after a while, but I literally have never been able to smell it on my skin after showering, unless I literally like like closely sniff my hands after they're like, you know, pretty dark, which I try to avoid. So Tanologist has no guide color. It applies completely clear. I also think it has a very smooth application. And without that guide color, I find it actually settles less into the dry patches. One of the big things that settles into dry patches of skin when you are self tanning is the guide color itself. It's not even the actual like tanner doing a lot of work. So without that guide color, I feel like Tanologist really doesn't settle into the like elbows, knees and all that stuff quite as much as other tans. Unfortunately, the Tanologist does always remain slightly sticky. It never completely dries. So that's probably the one thing I would change about the Tanologist. Also in terms of the shade, it's definitely not the darkest tan. I think it's a pretty natural color. It's kind of like a caramelly color. It's not too yellow, not too red, but I do wish it was just a little bit darker. In terms of longevity, I feel like my Tanologist always fades really evenly. The main time I see my self tanners fading in a patchy way is when the previous self tan I had on wasn't completely gone. So then you kind of have double the layers of tan kind of like patching up, but I feel like the Tanologist fades really evenly, very naturally. And since there's no guide color, you don't get that kind of transfer onto your clothes. I know that some people are like, how do you have any transfer if the tan is clear? But again, it's your actual skin that is like, coming off that can still stain things. I once saw Tanologist on their Instagram say like, oh, it'll never stain your bed sheets. I used Tanologist exclusively for quite a few months and my sheets did indeed get tan on them. So your white sheets are not safe with Tanologist. They're not safe with any self tan. So in terms of the tan setting, the initial wetness is gone in like the first one to two minutes. And then it eventually just kind of stays like slightly tacky throughout the rest of the tan. Next, we're moving on to another one of my favorite tans. We have 
Loving Tan. So Loving Tan has a couple different formulas. This one that I've been using for quite some time now is the Deluxe Bronzing Mousse in Ultra Dark. They also have an express version that sets in one to two hours, but this one you have to leave on for six or more hours. So generally this is like an overnight tan for me. So here's the Tanologist up close. It is a true like brown self tan. So when you apply it, it actually like just makes you look tan. It's not quite as weird of a shade as some of the other ones. So you can find Loving Tan at Ulta, their own website, and also on Amazon. It's definitely in the higher end price point. It is $40 for one little tube. And you actually get a decent amount less of the actual tanning liquid than you do in the Tanologist, for example. The Tanologist is 200 milliliters for $20, and the Loving Tan is $40 for 120 milliliters. So by weight, that makes this even more expensive. That being said, this is another one of my favorite tans for a few reasons. So like I said, it has a bronzy brown guide color, which I personally think the color of the Loving Tan looks very natural. It's definitely more on the reddish brown side of a self tan, but I like that they're not trying to be like olive toned and literally you end up looking like the Grinch. It has just kind of like a light florally scent. It's not quite as fresh of a scent as the Tanologist. It's not streaky with application and it also fades evenly. Honestly, every tan that we are talking about today faded pretty evenly, applied with no streaks. As long as you're applying the tan correctly, you're not gonna have any streaks. I will say with the Loving Tan, you might wake up the next morning with the guide color on and be like, oh my gosh, I look like a splotchy dark mess. But as soon as you wash off the guide color, it leaves just a very very nice, even, deep tan. So don't get scared when you're applying it and it kind of may like look a little bit splotchy. And even when you wake up, it might look a little bit splotchy, but that's just the guide color, not the actual tan. And this is the only tan I've ever tried that truly does dry to the touch. So all the other tans today, they always leave a slight tackiness. The Loving Tan, after about five minutes after you apply it, it's completely dry. You don't get that kind of stickiness. And for me, that makes it much easier to sleep in because I'm not feeling like I'm sticky all night, which is not really a great feeling. And it also makes it transfer less onto your clothes. So when I do wear my self-tan clothes, as I always wear, because I don't want to get my guide color like on everything, I get a lot less transfer of that. But you still are going to get some settling of the guide color into the elbows, the hands, and some transfer onto your white clothing. The Loving Tan Ultra Dark is also the darkest tan that I've tried. So it really gives you a lot of color payoff. And I use the Ultra Dark. They recently came out with a platinum self-tan, which is even darker. So if you're going for a super, super dark self tan, Loving Tan is honestly the way to go. So overall for Loving Tan, I love the deep color it gives. I love that it dries and it just like feels like a more wearable self tan, but it is pretty pricey. So if you're someone who self tans like every week, it might not be the most affordable option. Okay, next we move on to the tan that made me continue to film this video after I had already given up on it, the Saint Tropez Tanning Mousse. So we do not have consistent tan check-ins for the Saint Tropez one because the only time I used this tan was when I went on a trip. Um, it was literally bright green, literally bright green. Street. Tropez really said, let's get into the Christmas spirit with their green self-tanner. And then I bought the shade Dark. I let it sit overnight. It literally didn't look like I even used a self-tanner at all, except for where it clung to my dry patches to the point where even my mom was pointing out. She was like, oh, your armpits look like really dry. And she wasn't telling me, as like, oh, you know, you need to fix that. But she was like, yeah, that self-tanner was not good. Not only did I think it was not so great, but it was also the most expensive. It was $44. You can find it at Ulta and Sephora. I bought mine at Sephora and it applied smoothly. It had very little scent, but it also never dried. And stayed sticky all night and I was kind of hoping it would be a little more like the tanologist I was like okay you know tanologist it's $40 but at least like it dries and I can feel like it's not sticky all night but not the case. It collected on my dry patches, even like a week later, it just like was not budging. And like I said, gave very little color payoff for being a dark self tanner and looked to be almost completely gone in like two to three days. So I might've gotten like a dud batch or something, but I wasn't very impressed with Saint Tropez for the prices and all the hype I've heard. And the fact that it was like super green. I hate the green guide colors, guys. I don't understand why you'd want the guide color to be bright green. Because when you wash off the guide color, the tan isn't green. So what was the point? Just a little Grinch cosplay for the like, duration of the tan? All right, anyways, that was just mainly a little Saint Tropez rant, but maybe I'll retry it again at some point. Maybe I'll try a different formulation from them, but... So far, it was definitely not making the favorites list. The next tan to try, this was actually a suggestion from you guys. This is the Coco and Eve Bali Bronzing Foam and they have shades medium dark and I got the ultra dark 
I will say the ultra dark of this one is not as dark as the ultra dark of the Loving Tan. I'm actually wearing it right now and I honestly don't feel very dark. So the Coco and Eve is kind of more of a mid price point. This container is $34.99 and it's 200 milliliters, which is the same size as the Tanologist. In terms of developing time, this one says to apply for a minimum of two hours or overnight for a deeper tan. I did leave this one on overnight and frankly, I think that you have to, like I didn't even get that much color payoff for leaving it on for fully overnight. So I really wouldn't consider this one like an express tan. It also claims to be a lightweight non-sticky formula. This stays sticky the entire time. You continue to have tackiness. It does not dry like the Loving Tan. And one thing I really don't love about this one is the green guide color. So I guess it's not really looking green here, but I swear when I was putting it on, but you can kind of see there, it's definitely got a green guide color. And I was definitely green all last night. Anything you touch turns green. This stuff transfers like nothing else. Like this was the shirt that I was wearing last night while wearing the tan. And I have never had this much tan come off on any of my clothing. So this one definitely is not safe for your white clothing and your white sheets. It does have an incredible smell though. It smells like mango guava. Definitely the most powerful of the scents. The Loving Tan and the Tanologist were just kind of like light scents. This one is a lot stronger, but it smells really good. It's very like tropical. So another thing I didn't love about the Coco and Eve was that it's advertised as being very hydrating and everything, but especially with the green guide color, I really feel like the Coco and Eve sticks to the dry patches. And when it sticks to the dry patches, again, a lot of it is the guide color. So I found that like when I woke up this morning, even after exfoliating in the shower to get all the guide color off, I still had some sections of my body, like for some reason, like right where my hips crease I always like get a little extra self tan collecting there it was like oddly green in those areas so the rest of the self tan I feel like is a nice color it's definitely a little more on like the yellow side of a self tan as opposed to like a reddish brown but the color is totally fine but you do get some collections of slightly green which I just don't really feel like is the most appealing so yeah it just didn't dry all the way transferred a lot I feel like it clings to the patches a little more than some of the other tans so definitely was not my favorite especially with that green guide color. And in terms of longevity, I felt like it was pretty good, but I think by day six, it wasn't like super apparent that I was still wearing a tan. And the last tan we will be talking about today is the Bondi Sands. So I got the Bondi Sands, just the regular foam in the color dark. I believe they also have an ultra dark, which I probably should have gotten looking back because all my little swatches, if I look down, it's because I'm looking at my leg swatches. It's definitely kind of on the lighter side of tans. Um, so I'm thinking that the dark would just be like a little bit better. Bondi Sands is definitely a pretty easy tan to find. You can find it at Ulta, Amazon, Walgreens, Walmart, and it's $24.99 for 200 milliliters. So in terms of the color of this one, I would say that the color is kind of more like a light caramel guide color with just a tint of green, not nearly as green as the Coco and Eve. You can see it's just kind of definitely a lighter tan, a little hint of green, but applying it, it definitely looks less green than the Coco and Eve and the Saint-Tropez. One thing I really don't like about this one is it literally smells like a strong coconut alcohol. And honestly, like that's just like really overpowering and pretty gross. So I really don't love the scent when you apply it. If you are someone who's very sensitive to scents, wouldn't recommend that one. It is a six hour tan. It says to leave on for a maximum of six hours. Really the tans, like nothing really happens after you leave it on for a certain amount of time. Like it just stops developing. So I tend to wear this one overnight. It does stay slightly tacky though. It does not completely dry. And the tone of the color after rinsing it off is kind of like a light caramelly color. I would say it's like pretty neutral, not super green, not super red. And in terms of color transfer of the guide color, the guide color wasn't nearly as dark as the Coco and Eve. And I feel like it definitely gets a little bit of transfer, but not a ton. I also felt like this one was very smooth. I didn't have any streakiness. Again, I don't really get streakiness with tans when you apply them right, but I also got very minimal collecting on dry patches. So I felt like it was a good tan, just didn't love the scent. And I think I would choose maybe a darker color in the future. And if they had an express tan, which I'm not sure they do, but if they had one, that's probably what I'd go for. Personally, I hate sleeping in tans. So if I can just wear a tan for like two hours, rinse it off and then let it develop overnight without having to wear it, that's kind of my ideal way to go. And I literally just got an Amazon package and guess what it is? Something that was supposed to arrive 
several days ago so I could actually include it in the video. Uh, maybe we'll just delay this video even more so that we can include it. Anyways, I got the Bondi Sands Self Tan Eraser. So I'm not exactly sure how this works. I have to assume it just kind of helps to exfoliate the last couple layers of the skin so that you can rinse your tan off a little bit easier. Okay, so it's officially seven days since I last put on a tan. So I'm going to use the Self Tan Eraser now. Just read the instructions and it says, apply it to dry skin at least three days after applying self tan apply and leave it on for at least five minutes so i will try to do that then shower with warm water and you can use like a tanning exfoliator mitt which i have one of those so let's try that on i feel like i'm going to focus on areas where i feel like my tan is uneven and as you can see the tan definitely like collected in the armpit area this is the coco and eve just like really collected very badly this time. All right, I am fresh out of the shower, but I think that it like mostly worked. I definitely still have a tiny bit, but if you look up close, I feel like it's definitely a lot reduced. So I think this self tan remover works, but maybe need like one or two days to like really scrub it off. To be honest, I feel like usually it takes me like two weeks to fully have my tan all the way gone. Just like the little patches like tend to cling in certain areas. So I think it's a helpful tool, but it's not gonna like 100% get rid of the tan. But you have to use this at least three days after using the tan. So if I use this, we will see in a couple days, I guess. But this would have been very useful if it actually works for my self tan reviews because I would love to do one self tan every week, but the tans weren't completely gone after seven days. So I didn't wanna layer one self tan on top of the other because that's just like a recipe for patchiness like I discussed before. So I had to wait like two to three weeks. This would definitely aid in the process. So I also wanted to do some swatches of each tan next to each other on my skin to really kind of compare and see the actual darkness of the tan. Because to be honest, it's kind of hard to tell like in the videos, even if I put them side by side, just cause even though I tried to keep it the same lighting, lighting changes. So on the far right, I have the Coco and Eve. This is right after application. And as you can see, it's like a pretty green color. Tanologist, completely clear, no guide color. Loving tan definitely looks like the most like tan to me and like this darkish reddish brown. And the Bondi Sands also had a little bit of green, but not quite as much as Coco and Eve. And then waking up in the morning, these are the tans before the guide color was rinsed off. So again, far right, we have Coco and Eve. Yeah, and you can see the tanologist has a finely developed and all the colors look slightly different until you actually rinse them off. And then I feel like they're the most natural, but the Coco and Eve is still a little bit green to me, honestly, looking next to these other ones. And you can see the Loving Tan is by far the darkest tan. And in terms of the tanning longevity test, we are seven days after I did my little tan swatch test. And honestly, all of the colors are still noticeable. I would say that the Bondi Sands is the lightest. And I think the Tanologist and the Loving Tan honestly did the best, but honestly, all tans, they can last up to seven days. Just it's not quite as noticeable at this point. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Honestly, this could have been two different videos, like my self tan routine and how tans work and then a review, but we just included it all in one for my self tan lovers to have it all in one place. I do definitely wanna do another self tan review and happy to hear any feedback from you guys. If you'd like me to mention anything else about the self tans in future videos and also comment down below what other tans I should try. Like I could do a video of like all express tans or like gradual tanning lotions. Give this video a thumbs up if you made it this far and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.